revival mm -hmm. is when we enter into a place where the things we know become more real. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? You know, the Pensacola revival is based on repentance and souls. The, uh, you know, revival in Toronto is based on joy. We revival, it's re means again. It means knowing something. It's like more than you know it. A lot of times we think we know everything, amen? But we don't. And probably the, one of the greatest deceptions we can enter into is when we think because we know something, we know it in fullness. But I, I tell you, all of us, we need to know so much more. And I tell you, I include myself in that. And God wants to bring us to a place where we're growing in the revelation that has been given to us that we're so thankful for, but we're entering into growing, amen, in the context of that revelation. Paul said that, you know, he, obviously a man that wrote half the New Testament if you ascribe the book of Hebrews to him, and yet he said, I'm continuing, crying out to know him, amen. All right, we're going to share, uh, we've been sharing on uh, transfiguration, transformation, transfiguration, translation. And we said, each of those words come from the Greek word metamorpho, and it depends on the context how that is translated. And we spend a lot of time, a lot of time on the written word of God, just the power of it. And uh, there's no substitute for the written word of God. Amen? It is Jesus. It's alive, praise God. It, there's nothing like it. Amen? There's nothing like it. And uh, today we're going to enter into talking more about the voice of God. But it's always in line with the word. Amen? God would never say something to you that's contrary to the written word. Amen? Sometimes people come for counseling. They want to say, well, will God approve this or approve that? I say, well, you don't, I'm going to pray about it. Well, you don't have to pray about it. something that's already in the word. Amen. You don't have to pray about if this is right or that's right when it's already in the word. Praise God. So that it's always going to be in line with the word. Amen. Then there, what I want to share today is there's a witness of your spirit, God bearing witness. And then there's the voice of the Holy Spirit. And uh, five main ways that God speaks is, again, through the witness of the Holy Spirit, the voice of the Holy Spirit, and then, does he speak prophetically? Of course. Does he speak through uh, visions and dreams? Absolutely. He ob obviously speaks as well through apostolically in the sense that if you get a word from somebody that's contrary to what you know is going on in your own life and in your own church, etc., that's not going to be God. So apost apostle and prophet always work together. Apostle always precedes the prophetic. Amen. All right, so let's look at a few of these things and see how far we get. But here's the situation I think in all of us we need to know. God, everything he does is in the context of relationship, amen? So when we're talking about hearing God better, we're always talking about that which is relational, amen? Some people say, well, I, mean, I heard God, I heard God, and they're all about hearing God, but that's good. But God doesn't cause you to hear his voice. So you can have an identity by hearing his voice. He wants you to hear his voice so you can draw closer to him, amen, amen. and helping other people, praise God. So everything God does is going to be relational in the context of a love relationship as well. What God does is always going to be in the context of the kingdom of God. Romans 14, 17, God says, I am, it's not about the outward, amen, Kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Spirit of God. Whatever God does is in righteousness in the context of grace. Amen. We're righteous by grace. And in the context of doing right. Amen. Doing right. And it's in the context of peace. God says, I'll always lead you forth by peace and joy. Amen. All right. So we know that, but we want to reiterate it. And Amen. It's always good to be safe. Amen. All right, let's look at the witness of the Spirit of God first. In Romans 8, 16, the Scripture says that God bears witness 
that you're a child of God. The Spirit of God bears witness that you're a child of God. How many know the Spirit of God is in you? The Bible says in Proverbs 20, 27, that God works through your spirit. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. That's a powerful scripture. So God will bear witness. You can tell when something, amen's not right. Amen? You can tell when something's not right. And I'm going to give some examples there, but you can tell, amen, when things are right. Hallelujah. Amen. Then we have the voice of the Holy Spirit. John 10, you know, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. Here's the exciting thing, is that we're able to hear God's voice. Amen? It's exciting. Now, we need to hear God's voice because there's, again, when it, when it comes to the Word, the Word speaks for itself. The Word speaks for itself. But, you know, if you need to know what job to take or not to take, you need to be able to have the witness of the Spirit. Amen? You need to be able to be in a place where you hear God's voice. Obviously, in regards to who to marry, amen? Glory to God, who your friends are, where to go to church, etc. You need to hear God's voice. Obviously, again, the word takes precedence. You wouldn't marry, you'd be unevenly yoked in marriage. You wouldn't go to church that doesn't have like light that you have, amen? At the same time, when those prerequisites are filled, then you can enter into seeking guidance, amen, through the witness of the Holy Spirit and through the voice of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. And as you're in the Word, amen, as you are walking with Jesus, it should be normal, amen, to hear the voice of God. Hallelujah. Uh, and all of us, I mean, just, just recently, uh, Kathy, just, I mean, just a few days ago, she felt led to call somebody, they're friends, but we hadn't really talked to them for months. And when she called them up just this past week, she found out that uh, our friend's mom, she was getting ready to go be with the Lord. She's 87 years old. And she was so concerned whether she was uh, and had accepted the Lord. And, and that, of course, is the most important thing. But from what she said, it seemed like she did. But there was a lot of anxiety. And Kathy just said, you know what, put on some worship music for her and just let, just let there be peace right in the house. And she did that, called her brother up, and, uh, who's a pastor, and they said, let's just do that. And then for those days, it was just changed the whole atmosphere. Amen? So they went from a place of anxiety to a place of peace. Amen? Because Kathy was able to hear the voice of the Lord and called them up and praised God and, and made a difference. Amen? Uh, husbands need to listen to their wives more, I think. Amen. In the context of, uh, I remember a while ago, I was going to, I mean, it was years ago, I was going to a truck meet for, I, I can't remember, one of my daughters there running. And, uh, I mean, it was a pure, the sunniest day you could think of. And Kathy says to me, make sure you take your umbrella. And I'm thinking, silly woman, you know what I'm saying? Why would I take my umbrella? So in the middle of the meet, I mean, it clouds come, it starts to pour. And I am drenched. I mean, I am soaking wet to the point, I mean, I, I couldn't even lift up. And I heard the Lord say, you should have listened to your wife. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. But our wives, the Bible says, are helpmates. It's from the same word where it says the Holy Spirit is our helper. Amen. Men need to listen to our wives. Our wives need to listen to their husbands as well in the context of heirs together. Amen? So we enter into a place where we learn to hear the voice of God. But first of all, we have to understand your relationship is so intimate with Jesus that you can hear him. Amen? I think sometimes we can really get off on weird stuff and get so complicated. You know, God has given us eyes, the eyes of our spirit to see him. He's given us ears, amen, the ears of our spirit to hear him, amen, glory to God. He's given us a mind of our spirit, like Joyce Meyer teaches so well, amen, that you might know him, glory to God. We have the mind of Christ, hallelujah. God wants us to be in a place where we get excited because we have open relationship. And that's the whole key. Uh, when I, I was discipling a young man years ago, we were in campus ministry. His name was Craig, and uh, we're just learning how to hear the voice of God. And he was in front of uh, 
sheets. It was the older sheets before the new one was built in town. And he just had a witness that someone was going to hit in his car. The Lord said, move your car to the next space. Well, he's a young Christian. He thought, that's foolish. And bang, someone ran right into him. But we learn. Amen? We learn. God wants us to understand that our relationship is so intimate with him. Amen? That it's an open relationship. You know, I've shared this so often, but I love it. In John 6, 21, when Jesus came walking to uh, the apostles on the water, and they were, in, again, it wasn't some small boat. It was a ship. Man, they had 13 grown men in that boat. It was a ship, and Jesus came walking on the water, John 6, 20, 21, and they, you know, welcomed him into the boat after he said, do not fear. And the Bible says, immediately, it was translated to land, doesn't it? John 6, 21. I've read that so many pastors, they say, I never knew that was in there. Why'd he do that? Why does it say that in the Bible? Because it's open relationship. He did that because it's open relationship. Amen? Glory to God. It's amazing that people can read things and not read it. Amen? That's in there. And I, again, I, I've gone to pastor and pastor. You didn't see that in there. It's exciting. I, no, I, I don't know if that is in there. I just read it to him. But why is it in there? Because God wants us to know. It, it, his, the relationship between us and him. It's to be open. It's not blind faith. It's open. You know, when we pray for somebody, you know, we have a high, you know, success rate with cancer. It's because we pray knowing, not hoping. Glory to God. And uh, I keep statistics on everything we do. You know, and uh, glory to God. We have, you know, people, you know, getting flying in from New York City and people doing, you know, this and that that have needs because, People find out. I had someone recently called me from uh, South Carolina. Their son went to school up, uh, I believe, in Maine or Massachusetts. And they, they were a boxer, and they got knocked down, but they've been in a coma for almost a year. And uh, she called me up, and she said, I, someone gave me a CD, and we've had a couple different people come out of comas, and will you pray for us? Well, there's a good ministry down there I referred her to. And uh, but I said, yeah, we'll pray. But... God wants us to enter in, amen, to an intimate relationship with him. Glory to God that defies the religiosity. But the bottom line is that God wants us to know that he'll bear witness with our spirit. Usually when I'm trying to find out the will of God, I'll be honest with you, usually I don't hear a voice. The Holy Spirit just doesn't speak to me. I try to consecrate myself as best I can. And then just see where my spirit, what's in my spirit. Amen? You can tell, you know, when something's not right or when something's right. You know, years ago, I mean, years ago, uh, I met a, a guy. We are at a convention in uh, Tulsa, uh, Kent Hagen Convention. There was a guy there who was going to be a missionary to uh, Turkey. And I've been praying for Turkey. And I said, Lord, do you want us to go there? And I'm thinking, wow, it's pretty heavy duty. It's years ago. And I told Kathy, and of course, she's missed consecration. You know, sure, I, you know, Lord, won't, we'll just go. I'm like, wow. So I'm not that consecrated. So I thought about it a long time. And it took me a while, to be honest with you, to say, God, I'll be willing if you're doing that. It took me a while. I won't even tell you how long, <laughs> but a while. Probably about a year. And uh, because if I was going to do it, I was really going to do it, for real. And man, there's a cost for your family. For yourself, but and uh, but then the Lord said, I, I, when I got willing, was excited about it, then he said, no, don't do it. We're still you know, in contact with people there, but amen. But we hear the voice of God, amen. Uh, years ago, and we were at uh, Living Word Church, I'd preach once a month, and you know, it was a large church with about a thousand people, right? And a uh, good church, and we had a large crusade with Mike Warnke. And I'll never forget, I'm sitting uh, in, I don't know, but front middle section. I mean, there is over a thousand people. You couldn't fit anybody in. There's, I think it fit about a thousand, but man, I mean, if the fire people were there, they would have told half of us to get out. You couldn't get a seat. And Lord spoke to me. I mean, I had a witness, and Lord spoke to me and said, He's fraudulent, He's immoral, and nothing He says is true. And he had a huge following at the time. He sold almost a million copies, his book, Satan Seller. I'm thinking, wow, but I knew that I knew. So I went up to our pastor. You just don't do things without submission. I went up to our pastor, 
And I said, man, this is what the Lord spoke to me, and he respected me, I respected him. And you have to trust people above you. You trust them. Amen? And I just said, I know that I know. He's false. He said, that sounds crazy. I mean, he was just really, really popular. And I said, well, I said, what do you want me to do? I think we should tell people. He said, no. He said, the word of God is going to go forth. People are going to get saved whether he is or he isn't. And I mean, a lot of people came to Jesus that night. In fact, one of my best friends, his daughter got saved in that night. And it doesn't mean, but I mean, for about a year, I seemed like I was just out to lunch. Now, my pastor respected me. See, he trusted me. Amen. Even though it seemed like, and you can miss it. Amen. You know, if, uh, like Kim Clement says, if, you know, if you miss it, it doesn't make you a false prophet. It just makes you a wrong prophet, you know, at times. And I, he said, well, I think you missed. I said, I don't think I did. And I said, but that's okay. I said, I res-, you know, bottom line is, uh, again, you have trust in, your, in the context of, you know, of people you're under. And I, you know, I trusted him and he trusted me. About a year after that, uh, Dr. Dobson had put a lot of money in his ministry and had him on his program a lot, and it came out. He sold a million books to Satan Seller, and not one word of it was true. He was having relationships with seven other women. Everything he did was false. My pastor came to me and he said, wow. He said, that's like a, you know, one out of a million. You, you're getting that. But amen. And usually you're hoping the exact opposite. You want to, usually God bears witness, amen, with blessing. Amen. I mean, you know, at the same time, I'm trying to get across to you. You can trust your spirit. You can hear God, but you do it in the right way. Amen. I was in Los Angeles not that long ago, and one of the biggest names in ministry was in Christmas Magazine every month. And uh, this guy had fallen from grace. One of the largest ministries in the world. And a friend of mine took over for his church, one of my best friends. So as I was out, I preached at a Spanish-speaking church near Los Angeles, Pastor David Vivas, really good church. And then um, I was with, with this other man's uh, church. And then we went to where this man had um, fallen. I mean, he's, he had been given uh, $15 million to start a TV ministry. It was close to Angeles Temple where Amy McPhair uh, started her church, Worth Square. I mean, just, I mean, we're talking prime in Los Angeles. I mean, buildings worth like $15, $20 million. And this is huge, huge Bible school. So I'm sitting next to him and his sister at the service because he's not allowed to preach. They told him to step down for like two months. Should have been like about two years. But uh, they told him to step down. So I just, after the service, I told my friend, I, I said, he's no more repentant than the man in the moon. How can you tell? You can tell. And I said, he's not only had one relationship, he has multiple relationships. I said, I'll speak to him. But again, you want to go in order. Amen. You're submissive. I'm in that man's church. He's taking over. I I don't have the right, amen, to say something when it's not my church. I said, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. He said, that's crazy. He said, we've had the best counselors in here. We've had some of the, the biggest names in the world here. You know, they all said, you know, it's not that. It is a big deal, but not that big of a deal. And uh, so all I can tell you is this. You'll find out quick. And, uh, and I, I mean, it wasn't more than six weeks it came out. Multiple affairs, uh, hom- homosexual affairs, etc. cetera. And, uh, and my friend said, wow. You know, but how do you know? You know. Because uh, you got to know her to know. Amen? And see, here's the deal. You don't go looking for negativity. Amen? You don't go looking for anything except the voice of Jesus because you and I don't have a right. Amen? Unless, you know, but you know, it's not that hard to figure out when someone's repenting or not. So at the same time, man, God will cause you to enter into a place, praise God, where your spirit bears witness through the word of God and you believe in people. Amen? That are repentant. You believe uh, because you know and you believe in yourself. Sometimes the hardest person to trust is yourself because you've messed up different times. But the Spirit bears witness that you're ple- he's pleased. He bears witness. Man, your destiny is going to be amazing. Amen? He bears witness. So the voice of God, the witness of God, then of course there is the prophetic. Amen? Glory to God. And that uh, the prophetic is necessary. And visions and dreams are necessary. Glory to God. But what's exciting is that it's all about relationship. What is exciting 
is that, I mean, I could give a hundred testimonies, literally, in regards to, uh, in, you know, different things like I, I just did. And, you know, and all of us, we want to grow in hearing the voice of God. So what's the key? First of all, the key is to be in the Word of God. People that are always looking to hear the voice of God and not in the Word of God are easily deceived. The Word is your foundation. It's the voice of His Word, the Scripture says in Psalms. So we need to be in the Word first. Amen? This Word will make you receptive to His voice because you're born of the Word. Amen? Of incorruptible seed. And then you'll enter in, praise God, to being in a place where you put the word first, always the word first, and, and then yes, absolutely. What is God bearing witness with? And here's what the most exciting thing to me. Now, in ministry, again, you know, uh, I don't want to say this. Uh, and there's a, we all have different graces. And I do have a grace to, to discern things. I, 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 I go to a lot of churches. I, I went into one church. And God said, this church is gone in two months because of the way they treat women. I said, really? I don't even know the pastor. And I asked God as my witness in six weeks it was gone. But there's a grace there apostolically. But we all have a grace to be able to hear the voice of God. I, I went to church. I, I was up at, uh, was up towards Clarion. And uh, man, we're having a great revival service. I had a word of knowledge. It was a pastor's mom. She had cancer. Jesus did great things. I mean, it was powerful. And the Lord said to me, this was on a Saturday night. This will be the pastor's last service on Sunday. I'm thinking, what are you talking about? And man, the elders got together. Didn't It was revival going on. It wasn't because of me. It was They had made a decision prior because he was entering into a spirit-filled type of deal. And that was his last service. Wow. God will take us into things like that, but usually... The voice of God is first and foremost. I want to help you when you're missing it. But more than that, it's so Jesus can show you how much he loves you. Amen? How many of you hear the voice of God? He comes to you. And he said he loves you. He comes to you. And he embraces you. And it, even if he tells you to change something. Amen? Convicts. It's not to hurt you, but to help you. Amen? So I want to say this. Is we're just going to spend a few more minutes, just some more testimonies. But uh, here's what's exciting to me. Glory to God. You know, our main proof text has been Romans 8, 16, and Proverbs 20, 27, John 10. There's so many verses we'll get into. But uh, the most exciting thing about Jesus is this open relationship. Glory to God. Kathy was, uh, you know, we have three counseling centers, two uh, pregnancy centers that we started, and then a, a you know, center deals with all kinds of counseling things, of course, especially with sexual abuse. And, uh, but we had a counselor. She's really good, really nice lady, Orthodox Presbyterian background. And she said, you know, um, we're taught that it's not right to hear the voice of God. And we said, well, she shared this with Kathy, not with me. And because Kathy was always saying, the Lord's leading me to do this, leading me to do this. And and, and she said, well, because she said, because God is so awesome and so sovereign that it's just not right to say that you can be that intimate with him. And, you know, Kathy just shared with her real simply. And now she's in a, in a real good church at Welcome. Not that we don't put down churches, but she's somewhere where she said, you know what? I need to hear the voice of God. I, I need to know that it's right. But I feel today that it's an introduction to this. We'll be entering the different things, the gifts of the Spirit through this. And, but, you know, we're in worship. The word that came forth w w was the love of God. Amen? Mm -hmm. And where there's love, there's open relationship. There's open relationship. And I know myself. And I need, man, I, I was just praying yesterday. I was reading that book, and I've, I've read it before. Uh, the Prayer of Jabez. How many of you have read that? I mean, that's good, isn't it? And uh, man, just the testimonies in there were so good. And uh, the Lord was just dealing with me and just saying, I need you to receive open relationship more. I need you to receive 
me doing things openly and stronger than ever before. And I said, Lord, you know, I've seen some things and, you know, this, this and that and miracles, and different things, but it's nothing like God wants. You know, God wants us to share the gospel where people get saved every day. Why? Because of divine appointments. You're led by the Spirit of God. Amen? Oh, man. And there's times I know I miss it because sometimes, you know, it happens once. But if it happens once, it can happen every day. Amen? I've shared a story before. My favorite story is I was, we were in campus ministry. God spoke to me a, a certain residence hall to go to and a certain floor. It was sixth floor and it was, uh, anyways, uh, this residence hall at the university here. I said, okay. And there was a football game. Esther had a football game that day. It was in uh, November. And uh, so I go on that residence floor. And, and in those days, you could get, you, there's easier access to get into the residence halls. So I just went in and, you know, I just knocked on doors. I work with a group called New Life. We're sharing with people about Jesus. Give a few minutes to listen. But I knocked on every door. I think most people were at the game. And I mean, I did not get one response. And so, uh, you know, I, I left because it took a while to do that, to do that whole floor. And, you know, the devil was there. You can't hear God. How many times has he ever told you that? Can't hear God, you know, you miss it, on and on. But I knew that God spoke to me. Sixth floor of that residence hall. At the same time, I started to get a little bit down. Amen? Because I'm thinking, man, you know, what's up with that? So I just said, hey, you know, I'm, uh, I'm down a little bit, so... I'm going to go up Giant Eagle and buy a hoagie. You know what I'm saying? Make myself feel better. So uh, I was on my way. Well, I actually went to Giant Eagle. I'm on my way back. And there's a college student. And uh, he's carrying groceries. He's on the side of the road. A little bit from Giant Eagle. And I, so I stopped and picked him up. And I said, man, where are you going? And uh, I said, and he said, oh, I said, I'm on campus. I said, well, where are you at? He said, sixth floor. And Dodds, the residence hall. And, of course, Jesus came. So I shared that to say this. If Jesus can do that one day, he can do it every day. Amen? The, the harvest is plenty as the laborers are few. Jesus has needs for us to be his hands and feet. Amen? We're vessels of honor. We, we pray to be vessels of honor. Obviously, he's the one that does it. But it gets exciting when daily you know that's going to work daily. Not weekly, not monthly, not yearly. But you know that God will make a way, give you a divine appointment, where you just know this is God. Amen? And you know that when you share the gospel or, 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 or lay hands on someone, it's like whatever, that he's going to come. And again, it's exciting. When you know every day, God's going to first speak to you through his word, obviously. He's going to lead you to amazing things. I mean, every, it's amazing what's in here. Amen? I, you know, I was many times I was fasting for, just to get closer with the Lord. And man, I think the third day of fast, it just didn't seem to be working real well. All I got was hungry. And but the Lord said, fast one more day. And I'm thinking to myself, three days didn't work. What's another day going to do, right? But you don't tell us. How many of you sometimes don't tell the Lord what you're really thinking? As if he doesn't know, right? So, of course, in my spiritual religiosity, I said, yes, Lord. It's my privilege. And I'm thinking, really? You know, in the, in the back of your mind. And I said, all right, Lord, one more day. And the fourth day, I usually don't do this. I just flipped open the Bible. Kathy does it, and she always gets God loves you, on and on and on. I used to open up the genealogies. But I flipped it open. And his words in big, bold print, Exodus 34, 14, said, my name is jealous. I'm jealous over you. It changed my life. But see, every day, God wants to reveal, accentuate what he's revealed. He wants to speak to you every day. He wants to use you in an awesome way every day. Kim Clement said something I never forgot. He said, there's not one day in my life that God does not speak to me something prophetically to share with somebody that does not change their lives. I thought, wow. Charles Finney, when he, he said there was never a day in his life that God did not lead him to somebody 
in the context of winning souls. Isn't that amazing? Smith Wigglesworth said the same thing. So what are we saying today as we close? It's all about relationship. God has made a way for us to know that we know. Obviously, it's the word first. Amen? But then it is the witness of the Holy Spirit, the voice of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Jesus. Jesus. And he wants us to be excited about it. He wants us to believe it. We have ears to hear. He wants us to cultivate it. Amen? And he wants us to live in it. I'll share one last thing uh, in that book, uh, The Prayer of Jabez. And you've probably heard this before. Uh, there's a man, I guess, he went, to be, went home to be with the Lord. And uh, someone had a vision of this, I guess. And he was uh, excited, obviously, to be in, in heaven. And there was a, a, a large warehouse-looking building. And somehow he got access to it. And he saw all these presents that were unwrapped. And he said, what are they? And the Lord said that they're all the blessings I have for you that you never opened up. Amen? God has probably for each of us so much more. Amen? So much more than what we realize. Amen? So much more. You know, when David Hogan was here, and uh, he's not the most articulate man in the world. He's not the most schooled man in the world. But nobody's raised more people from the dead than him, over 300 people from the dead. And as I was just having lunch with him, you know, he conveyed something just powerful. That he entered in the being used of God have stirred over 10,000 churches, won over a million people to Jesus. Just uh, profound miracles. He entered into that simply because he saw that it was available. And he's always asked about the miracles. Heidi Baker, the same thing with uh, all the times where the you know, food was multiplied, etc. But David says it pretty strong. He's kind of, he just says, I've entered into all of this because I'm a son and not a bastard. And what that means is this. I know that's strong. Gives people's attention. But what he's saying is this. It's who I am. I'm not illegitimate. I'm not trying to become a child of God. I am who I am because of Jesus. Because of the blood of Jesus. And because of that, I can hear. I know what's right and wrong. I can tell when something's not right and what it is. I'm made for open relationship. I'm made, praise God, to hear the voice of God. I'm made to win souls. You are. My prayer is that each of us will enter into that revelation, forget the religious stuff, trying to accomplish agendas, this or that. We have friends, two close friends, they just sent us a newsletter. They, they minister in China. And the Len Hearts, I mean, I've known them for... Years and years, we support the missionaries. They said we were, went into a, a village to share the gospel, and God said, leave and go to another village. That night, men militant, like Islamic people, they burned it down. No one survived. And they didn't even know that there were people arrayed against this village. I just got this. And, and all kind of people got saved in the next village. I mean, the whole village, you can see, is, is just gone. It's gone. I mean, that just happened a few weeks ago. And they're good friends of ours. I'm saying this to say this. You don't have to be some spiritual superstar to hear the voice of God. You don't have to be some spiritual superstar to win people to Jesus. All you have to do is enter in to see that because you're a child of God, by his great grace. All these things are valuable. You're made to win and not lose. You're made to be blessed and not be hurt. Amen? You're made to walk with Jesus in an amazing way. You're made to hear the voice of God. Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is so gracious. Amen. Let's just stand as we close today. I tell you, God is good. Amen?
God is gracious. Thank you, Father. Glory to his name. As we close, if, I just want to encourage you. Let go and let God. And see yourself. Let him show you what the gospel really is. Who you really are. Glory to God. You don't have to manipulate. You don't have to make things happen. Jesus will make it happen. Amen? Because it's about him and not about us. But he does work through us. Through his word. Through his voice. Through the witness of his spirit. Oh man, I just sense the Lord. Just don't let the Lord speak to you now. If, who knows what it is. It might be conviction. It might be just saying he loves you. It might be just saying, you know what? Let go and let God. Don't fear. Get on with what you're called to do and just let go and let God. Mm, Jesus, just let them speak to you if you're, just take a minute, let them speak to you. And then we're gonna pray and if anybody has needs after we pray, you can come up. Thank you, Jesus. I only word knowledge I have was the name Judy. If that means something to someone, you can come up. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we praise you. We worship you, God. Okay, God's not mocked. God's not mocked. He's not mocked. It's not a game. He's not mocked. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you. We worship you. Lord, just, just let the Lord minister to you. Anybody listening by CD, watching by DVD, we just say this. If, if, if in your heart right now you're being convicted, of just, you're not walking with the Lord like you should here, trying to manipulate God or whatever it is. We, we just receive you just to enter in and just say, Jesus, forgive me, help me, cleanse me, make me whole. I give myself to you. I just sense Jesus. Man, something, I just sense, don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Don't be afraid to go out on a limb. You feel weak, you're strong. God's the one that's going to back you up. He will back you up. He will back you up.